nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living home. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is Good morning and a happy Pentecost. Thank you for uh, joining us this morning as we hear the word of God in order to strengthen our spirits and uh, help us keep holy the Lord's day. Uh, there are others from outside our parish who are joining us. Uh, welcome to uh, uh, Jordan Batani in Michigan. Uh, know that you are welcome and embraced by our community as you honor us by your presence. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. That's the opening sentence of our first scripture reading from the book of Acts. It, it makes me sad because you and I are not together in one place. Because of COVID, it's not prudent for us to be together in one place. We're confined to our homes. We can't gather for prayer and fellowship and we don't know for sure when we'll all share the Eucharist again around a common table. So it feels difficult to contemplate togetherness, much less celebrate a great feast day like Pentecost in this context. But in another sense, we are in one place. We're in a hard place. Not only the anxiety of a pandemic, but now because of the racial divide in our nation, we're in a place of separation facing the consequences of division between races, which has plagued our country for too long. How much we need the unity and peace which the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus brings. 
Let us open our hearts and pray, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. The Hawkins family will lead us in our common responses and I invite you at home to answer those responses, responses to uh, pray with the cantor and the responsorial song. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the God of life who broke the bonds of death and raised Jesus from the tomb be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, we hold in our hearts and in our prayer the whole world that is in transition. And we pray for the coming of the Holy Spirit to bring us courage and fidelity to the gospel. So light a candle, place a bowl of baptismal water nearby, and welcome the risen Lord into your home where he dwells with you each day. Let us bow our heads in silent prayer. Lord God, through the mystery of this holy feast, you sanctify your church in every nation and people. Pour out the gifts of your spirit across the face of the earth, and in your merciful kindness, touch the hearts of all believers as you touched those who first heard the preaching of the gospel. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Did you know that there are over 6,000 languages spoken in the world? Only 23 of those are used by half the world. Our first reading speaks about people with different languages, but all of a sudden they can understand each other because they're speaking the one language that is universal, the language of God's love. I invite El Ed Halschwander to deliver our first scripture for us. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise, like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each one of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh Lord my God, you are great indeed. How many fold are your works, O oh Lord, the earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit 
and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, they die and they return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit of life, they are created in your sight. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May his glory last for all time. May the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him will be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. When St. Paul is uh, writing to the uh, community at Corinth, uh, he speaks some very beautiful words, but one of the reasons he does so is because the, the community has become ununified and there's been a lot of factions. And so he calls for them uh, to remember who they are. And he asks us to, we're unified as the one body. I invite Wendy Levitch to uh, deliver our second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On certain feasts of the church year, there is a uh, poetic song called The Sequence on Easter, on Corpus Christi, and on the Feast of Pentecost. I found a creative rendering of the sequence that we'll listen to.
of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the good news according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were out of fear, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. For our salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In his book, the kind of brave you wanted to be. The late author and storyteller Brian Doyle tells of riding on an elevator when a man and his four-year-old daughter got on. Brian asked what floor they wanted, and the little girl said, seven million. Brian played along. He reached up as high as he could to press an imaginary button, and up they went. And on the ride, they talked about how the buttons were twice as big as any giant's finger and how older buildings didn't have 13 floors. Isn't that funny that an ancient superstition would still be reflected in modern buildings? Well, by now, the little girl was dancing with delight and her dad and Brian were smiling at her sprightly spirit. When they came to their floor, the door opened and the little girl waved goodbye and leapt away. But the dad hesitated a second and said to Brian quietly, hey, thanks. Brian Doyle writes of that moment. He says, I knew just what the father meant. Something like, thanks for being four years old for a minute. He said, we have those moments when we are all the same age from the same country, with the same language on our teeth. And it never lasts too long, but it always feels weirdly familiar, doesn't it? Like we're home again for a moment, with family we hardly get to see. In the Pentecost event, the Spirit of God enables Peter and the first community of disciples to break down the barriers of language, to reveal God's peace in the midst of all these visitors to Jerusalem from different parts of the Middle Eastern world. Just as the generosity of heart and a little girl's carefree joy lets her dad and Brian Doyle be four years old for a minute. 
God's Pentecost spirit enables us to break down the adult barriers of age, culture, nationality, race, gender, and creed to realize God's vision on an earth that serves as home to one human family, united in peace, respect, and justice. From the very beginning of the pandemic we're enduring, I've maintained that one of the benefits, if there be any, is that we're all in this together. COVID-19 is affecting 213 countries and territories around the world. All of us, brothers and sisters, children of the one God, all laid low by a sub-microscopic virus. Only by remembering our common humanity can we find the reason to work together and protect one another. Yesterday afternoon, Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley, the first American astronauts in nearly a decade to leave the Earth's atmosphere, were launched into space on a craft called the Crew Dragon. That capsule was designed to take people on the 220-mile voyage to and from the International Space Station. From their vantage point in space, they can look at us and what do they see? A single planet, the home of the human race, what the astronauts of Apollo 17 in 1972 photographed and called the blue marble. Remember it? One of the most reproduced images in history. From their place in the heavens, they don't see the patients in COVID wards on respirators struggling for their lives. They don't see the police officer whose knee is pressing George Floyd's face to the ground as he grasps for death, for breath before he died. They don't see the unleashing of violence and destruction in the wake of that injustice as cities across America become scenes of marches turned into riots. From that distance, they don't see the woundedness of America where the divisions between haves and have-nots, between those in power and those without it, have yet to be fully acknowledged, confessed, repented, and forgiven. They don't see the attitudes and systemic inequities that make such tragedies commonplace. They see the blue marble looking peaceful, and serene. Isn't that the purpose of the Spirit's coming at Pentecost? To restore in us the vision of the reign of God that Christ had come to announce. To take the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus in all its fullness and unleash its power in our lives, in our own day. All Jesus' words and deeds are to come alive in us through his spirit, so that as he did, we will wash clean what is sordid, warm up what is frozen, cure what is wounded, bring life to what is dying, straighten what is warped. This is the Holy Spirit at work deep inside us, taking the broken parts of us and putting them in order and unifying all our talents and energies in a Christward direction. The Holy Spirit is our living connection to Christ. If we are the blue marble, the one earth when viewed from outer space, if St. Paul's analogy of the body in today's epistle is true, that you and I, though many parts are all one body, then you and I share a responsibility in prayer and action to help restore that vision of God's kingdom. As removed as we are from Oakland or from any city center 
where the shades of night in the past two days brought out the rage of a repressed people, we can bring forgiveness and reconciliation, compassion and understanding to a nation that has failed to reconcile with our own history. The risen Lord entered the place where the disciples were gathered in spite of locked doors and breathed into them the Holy Spirit. That same risen Lord breaks into our hearts and urges us to go out into the world to proclaim the mighty acts of God. Margaret Peterson, the CEO of Catholic Charities East Bay, offers a call to action to all Catholics of our diocese. She wrote in an email yesterday, I ask you to join me in speaking up to injustice, even when it shows up in the words or jokes of a friend. Pursue justice with rigor, especially after the headlines move on to the next story. Hold conversations about what is happening and what we are called to do about it, whether at church, in our schools, our homes, and our families. Listen without defense to the honest experiences of our black and brown brothers and sisters. Like Brian Doyle and the little girl's father in the elevator, who became four years old for a minute, can we not put ourselves into the situation of a black mom or dad who has to give instructions before their son goes out to a movie or a gathering with friends about what he should do and say if he's stopped by the police? Who of you would need to do that with your own child? In the face of a confusing and crippling pandemic, and now with scenes of violence and destruction on the nightly news that's too unbearable to watch, it's difficult to be a people of hope. We need the Holy Spirit to help us believe that human beings have greatness and holiness within them like seeds that open only under great fires to believe that some unimaginable essence of who we are persists past the dissolution of what we are. To believe against such evil, hourly evidence that God and love is why we are here. Come Holy Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Dear brothers and sisters, for 50 days we've celebrated the victory of the risen Lord. Now he pours out his spirit upon us that we may proclaim his good news to the world. So let us renew the promises made at our baptism. I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost, and given by them and their successors to all the baptized? I do. do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
The spirit of the Lord long awaited and prayed for descends today upon the church to complete the, even in our own time, the great wonders of Pentecost. So let us open ourselves to the workings of that spirit. I invite Buzz Sherwood and Kelly Daggs to lead us in our petitions. For the whole church on this day of Pentecost, for Pope Francis, all our leaders and people, may the strong wind of the Spirit's coming surge through our homes and our hearts, kindling us in us the fire of God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That God's Spirit bestow on old and young alike dreams of peace and visions of justice that we may be in our society witnesses to the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord. That during this difficult time when life is uncertain and the future cloudy, we may accept the spirit's guidance as we face life's challenges and share its joys. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the hungry and hurting peoples of our country and our world, those without work and those who are despairing, may receive compassion and aid to rebuild their lives. And for our sick, especially William Moncash, Barbara Worsham, and Bob Miller, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For all who are experiencing new stirrings in their lives, calls to change and growth, or movements of repentance, that they may not quench the loving spirit who awakens within them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for George Floyd, his family and community, and all our nation traumatized by his tragic death in Minnesota. May God's own spirit grant healing, conversion of heart, and the peace that follows when justice prevails. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. That those who have died may take part in the new creation and rejoice in the spirit forever, especially those who have died from the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. In silence, let us bring our personal needs and prayers to the Lord. Today, O oh God, you bring to fulfillment the paschal mystery of Jesus, your Son. Hear our prayers and pour forth your Spirit upon the church. May she be a living Pentecost throughout history and to the ends of the earth, gathering all nations and all people as one, in the name of Jesus and his Spirit, living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. Let us unite our prayers into one in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On our festivals in heaven, give us this day. day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but the land of the evil. Amen. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but rather upon the faith of all who have gathered together and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the risen Lord be always with you. With your spirit. Let those who are at home with their family share a sign of peace and those of us who are alone extend that peace in our hearts to one another. Peace be with you all. Let us join together in the uh, prayer of spiritual communion. Since we cannot receive our Lord uh, in the Eucharist, we know that he is present to us and we invite him into our hearts. My Jesus, I believe that you are present 
in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you and to your mystical body throughout the world. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. O oh God, you bestow on your church the gifts from heaven. Preserve the grace you have given us that the breath of Pentecost may quicken our hearts and that our gathering during this time of pandemic may holy by your spirit may advance the great work of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Thank you for joining in prayer this morning and thanks to our lectors and readers and our family leader. Uh, we look forward to the day we can be reunited at the Lord's table in the house of the church. This week I'll be attending a meeting with fellow clergy and uh, our bishop as we consider how we can safely begin to open our churches while that will eventually happen, we all need to recognize that it will be a slow process and it must be a safe process. The same safety and health precautions of wearing a mask, hand and surface sanitizing and social distancing will guide any return uh, to group worship. The churches will be limited to 25% uh, of our capacity at any service and those over 65 will be discouraged uh, for, from risking your health. Uh, we'll adhere to the guidelines issued by our county health department and the proper health authorities. And we'll also continue to live stream if those masses as well as our Zoom gathering so that you can be present with us at home. I invite you to stay in touch with us through our website, our Facebook page, and our uh, e-newsletter, The Timely Perpetuan. You can make a contribution, uh, which all our parishes need at this difficult time. Um, this would have been the Sunday for our quarterly collection for our outreach ministry. Um, as you know from uh, reading about it, uh, many, many uh, people are going hungry because of the pandemic and the agencies, even in our own Contra Costa County, are overwhelmed with requests for food and support. Uh, that need is as great as ever. On our parish website, you can contribute uh, both to the parish, but also to the uh, quarterly outreach collection. On Wednesday, our town hall gathering uh, will be at seven o'clock. Last Wednesday, we had a wonderful gathering and listened to uh, poetry from our uh, several of our own parishioners. Uh, you can connect through the parish website. This Wednesday, uh, parishioners who work in the medical field will gather with us to share their experience of the pandemic and its impact on their work and profession. Uh, with us will be parishioners, uh, Drs. Bob Buckley, Tim Ganey, Bob Mooney, and uh, Patty Harrow. I'm looking forward to hearing their insights and to bring some of our pressing questions uh, about the coronavirus to them. If anybody needs assistance during this time, errands to be run, food delivered, or other needs, our website has contact information for our women's ministry who are eager to help anyone in need. And don't forget, if you can donate blood, uh, the Red Cross uh, certainly uh, needs and appreciates blood donations. I'm available uh, just to talk or for reconciliation or anointing of the sick. Uh, today at 11 o'clock, there'll be a car caravan in remembrance of the loss of Mr. George Floyd and other senseless losses. It's gonna begin at the Akalani's parking lot at 11 and uh, end the caravan at the Arinda Community Center. It's open to the public. We'll listen to our uh, closing music.
Well, that ought to send you into your day with a little <laughs> like <Yeah. Here. laughs> thank you receive the lord's blessing this day the father of light has enlightened the minds of his disciples by the outpouring of the holy spirit may god give you the gifts of the spirit forever and may almighty god bless you and keep you in his care the father the son and the holy spirit amen amen the great 50 days of easter have ended Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.